714 on this Monday morning. Mike Sisk is back from Minute Mechanic. And what's going on? Been busy. Hey, Dale. How's it going? Yeah, good. Same here. We had a busy week of it last week. Um, you know, pretty weather. This has been a beautiful fall thus far, hasn't it? Let me tell you. I yeah. thought I-40 yesterday. <laughs> this is about Between perfect. Jackson and Nashville, Tennessee. Pretty, yep. Yeah. It's it's not to the point where it's just, oh, my goodness, it's so, so pretty. It's just getting to the point where, I mean, let me back up. It was when I left, uh, I left about 8 o'clock yesterday morning from Franklin, Tennessee. And um, one of those cool, crisp, clear fall mornings. And I'm heading west with the sun behind me, so everything is kind of backlit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Beautiful drive. Yeah, I Simply like this beautiful. time of year a lot. And I, I don't care for winter because you know I know where where falls what falls yeah. leading us into. But boy, this is a good time of year. It is. So you've been busy. Yeah, we've yeah. been real busy. Uh, had a good week last week, and I was out the week before, and uh, it was okay. We did pretty good that week. You know, it's just just one of those things. This time of year, this week here, when you got to go in and pay uh, personal property taxes on the fifteenth, it can get kind of <laughs> slow right along in there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be plenty busy. Just haul the wheelbarrow load of money down to Teresa's office, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got a few questions for you. Okay, what maintenance items fall under the term winterizing? That's a good question. Yep. The first thing that pops into mind is your antifreeze. You know, call it coolant in the summer, and we call it antifreeze in the winter, mm-hmm. and that's about what it is. We need to have that. You need to have that checked. Go in, you know, bring it by bring it to us. We can we can pop the cap on that radiator and take a sample of that of your of your coolant and give you an idea of what shape it's in. Many times now we have all this extended life antifreeze floating around. You know, everybody's using it. General Motors kind of got the ball rolling with their decks cool, and everybody else has followed suit. So five year antifreeze is not anything rare anymore like it used to be. So we need to get a check on that antifreeze, see what the freeze protection is good for, uh, get an idea of the condition of it and, and what shape the, the actual additives and all that, that were put in the antifreeze when it was news in. So you may need to have an antifreeze flush and fill. And um, those are, the, you know, those are not, not a big deal. It usually takes 30 minutes-ish, something like that, to do it. And that will put you back to good for another four or five years. The other thing I think of when we talk about winterization of a car is check the battery. We need to get a uh, we we need to get a good check on that battery. Take a look at the cables, make sure they're tight, make sure they're clean. Yep. If the battery is uh, a not a maintenance free battery, we need to pop the caps on it, check the the electrolyte level in it, and 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 then we have a super duper battery tester up there, and it can t- give you a very very good idea of what shape it's in. So you know, that yeah. they gives you an idea of what you're looking at for this winter, you know. Batteries that are starting cars up, <coughs> excuse me, batteries that are starting cars really well right now, on those mornings when you get up and it's 15 or 20 degrees, they may struggle. So we have to, te- we have to run a check on that. Uh, winterization, we always try to look at belts. We look at people's tires for them. You know, tires, I've, people have heard, it, heard me say it a million times, tires can kind of get away from us. They can. You know, we don't pay a lot of attention to them. As long as they're not flat, we seem to be happy with them, you know. And uh, so we look at tires, belts, look at wiper blades, different things like that. And um, that's about what goes into winterizing a car. You know, let's talk about the battery for a minute. Um, we don't realize the stress that the batteries. I'm not meaning stress like, oh, my gosh, the boss is down my back type of stress. I mean, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. And then maintaining the voltage to keep all the accessories. You know, mm-hmm. if you got kids, sometimes you get the DVDs in the back, or the the radio, the air conditioning, or the heater, the dash lights, the headlights, the tail lights, the brake lights, and all the computer functions at the same time. And of course, your alternator supplies that, but there's a lot of wear and tear. Yes, and where there's an amperage load, there's heat. The electrical loads on these modern cars, of course, everybody knows it. They've only went up. Mm-hmm. But but by all of the things that you just named, our cars are loaded with electrical accessories now. Mm-hmm. Every car comes in is just just heaped on, and you know the when you move up the line on cars and you start getting into SUVs or or, or you know super duper sedans, you get into the Cadillacs and different things. The 
the amount of electrical accessories is just boggles the mind what all they will do for you. Mm-hmm. Well, you're you're 100 percent right. Batteries. Most cars, the battery's out under the hood, and it lives a pretty hard life. You know, it comes out of 100-degree summer days and stuff where it's so hot under those hoods, mm-hmm. ridiculously hot. Now we're going to flip around, and it's going to be sitting outside in 15 or 20-degree weather. Yeah. And uh, the amount of amperage it takes to start that coal motor goes up a bunch. And, a, and another factor on a car battery is vibration. Sure. They, you, need to, you need to make sure when you get a battery... We see them coming in the shop where people have just found a battery that fits. They just stick it in there and hook battery cables to it, and away they go. They not they don't have them mounted, so they can move around, they can rock, slide, and the vibration you're talking mm-hmm. about. You know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why they go to all the trouble to make a battery hold down. Yep, and that battery hold down needs to be tight and in place. Years ago, when I was working for Sears and Roebuck, the diehard battery had what was called a heavy-duty battery, and the specifications on it were it had an extra cushion in the bottom for extra vibration. This was an industrial, you know, because guys were putting in the, uh, back then it was a Group 27, it was a 12-inch right. battery rather than a 10-inch. Bulldozers, uh, the big Ford trucks, some of the big General Motors trucks had the big, when they had the 366 and bigger long-stroke engines. But when you're off-road and that, you know, the trucker devices bounce around, so is the battery. Mm-hmm. Sure and, it is. And that's something that's going to crack the internal component. Over time, yeah. it'll wear one out. Mm-hmm. It sure will. Yep. Battery hold downs. Put the correct group number battery in your car when you replace it. That way your, your hold downs will work correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can avoid that. Wow. This is, this is wild. I own a Volkswagen diesel that falls under the current emission scandal. What should I do? Yeah, I'm not. them out for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an expert on this, but I'll offer a few thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm not an expert on diesels and for sure not an expert on Volkswagen. My question about this with Volkswagen, if you've got the technology to figure out how to uh, falsely document the emissions, why don't you just come up with the software that will reduce the emissions to begin with and not cheat the government? Well... Yeah, I, t- I was talking with a person the other day, and I made the statement that if you are smart enough to come up with software that knows when it is being tested for emissions and it alters the mapping in that program to pass emissions, and then when the test is over, it reverts back to another map so that the engine runs good. If you're smart enough to devise that, you're smart enough to know you're going to get caught. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For those who don't know, let's explain what's going on. The United States has emission standards that were based off the EPA back in 1970, 71, when the EPA was formed. You now have computer control. This The, the automotive industry has gone from a carburetor to a different ignition system to everything being controlled. Now we're at 14.7 to 1 air fuel mix, which means for every sip of gasoline, it takes 15 gulps of air. That's the ratio. Right. And I, I'm not sure what it is on it. No, this is a diesel, but I'm, it may be different. It may be different. It's yeah, probably a 10 to 1. And, you know, the people, they're asking, what should I do? And you're right. You wait them out. You see what Volkswagen is going to do about this. And what and, they're actually doing, like when you get a check engine light. Now, right. let's say you, pl- you you got your Dodge Ram out here. Okay, let's say your check engine light comes in. You take There's a device you can plug in. You use the scan tool from Snap-on. Mm-hmm. It plugs into a component under the dash. And it will tell you what emissions component may be defective, perhaps an oxygen sensor. Okay. What's happening is right now, if you were to plug in your Dodge or my Chrysler or Jerry's Ford out here, it's going to say, you've got this device not working. You replace it and your emissions are back to standards. They've bypassed that. There's actually a plug that Mike can plug into a minute mechanic. What's the thing called? ALDL connector. And it's it's a snap-on solar scanner. Mm Mm-hmm. You can actually read from the computers any devices that are incorrect in the emissions system. Right. Volkswagen's bypassed that. Yeah, I, and, and again, mm-hmm. I'm not an expert in this. I think what they have actually done is they they have got the software in that, in that computer that it knows when it is being emissions tested. It knows when the, the emissions test is happening, and it changes the, it switches to a different map. And a map is just a different program in that computer that will make it pass emissions. When the test is over, it goes back to its standard map. What that makes me think is this. The car 
will not run as well, will not run as, as good on the emissions map. You know, they're, they must be leaning it out quite a bit to make it pass emissions. And it may very well be one of those deals where you want to be careful about what you let Volkswagen do to your car because if they were to change the programming in your computer enough, all of a sudden your car may or may not run the way it used to. I think it's one of those deals where you sit back and wait. And I would not want to be the first one, in my opinion, that I let Volkswagen reprogram my ECM in my car. I would wait a bit and see how well this is received, what other people are saying that have had this job done. And I think Volkswagen is supposed to have a plan in place by the first of the year. And it's going to cost them billions upon billions of dollars. Yeah, maybe the end of Volkswagen. And there's this, millions of cars out there that are affected. They yeah, there's a do. lot of diesel Volkswagens. We service a bunch of them. Do you? Yeah, service quite a few of them. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where they, they rolled the dice and took a chance, and now they got caught, so it's time to pay the piper. And, uh, and you know, that's that old mm. deal about not cheating, I guess. <laughs> you know? But, that, yeah, they have got quite the mess on their hands. And now, do those cars require diesel exhaust fluid like some of the newer vehicles, I think, from General Motors? I don't think so. Really? I don't know that any of our European diesels in that year range has, has, has the DEF, the diesel exhaust fluid. I almost, and I, I'm not an expert, but I think that is almost exclusively an, an American-made innovation. Well, I got and, behind a tractor trailer yesterday that needed a little bit. Let me yeah, tell you. but I, you know, these diesel trucks, the, the the three quarter ton and one ton diesels that come in up at Minute Mechanic, that run the DEF, man, they seem to run awfully clean. Mm-hmm. They, they sure Marco's do. got one of the newer Dodge Rams that actually has a gauge on the dashboard, uh, an indicator of the amount of fluid that's in the tank. Mm-hmm. They have a particulate particulate filter in the exhaust that traps a lot of stuff, and in between that and the diesel exhaust fluid injection. Man, there's some pretty clean running diesels. That's good. And That's uh, good. man, Volkswagen may need to take a page out of that book if they can get through, if they can get past all of this. You know, this is going to be one of those deals with that scandal. I read an article here a while back, an online article by a European auto writer, a journalist, and uh, he said a lot of people in Europe says this will be a a monkey hanging on their neck for the next twenty years. Mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, you know, it's that big of a scandal. They they really really got caught. Wow. Got about two minutes left. I've talked about um, just general maintenance right now. It's going to be a pretty day, and you've got uh, no holidays. You're, I mean, like the, what's it, Columbus Day today? Yes, thanks, Dale. <laughs> Today's Columbus Day. <laughs> but you're working. <laughs> we'll, we'll be there celebrating Columbus. And, uh, <laughs> you know, our days vary, and it's it's strange. Th- things seem to, to come in groups, you know. Well, one day may be just so much front-end work you can't hardly keep up, and then a couple of days later it's brakes or it's, yep, yep. you know, transmission fluid services, different things. It, it rotates around. Yeah. And anything you need, give me a call. I can schedule you in. we got five days this week. I can fit you in on any day you want and basically any time you want, usually. And you know. all major brands of motor oils. Yes, we got loads of them, and Pennzoil will be there today to unload some more. And, uh you know, we loaded up on Mobile One, and, and well, our, our synthetic oil changes have really picked up the volume of yeah. them. Yeah. And I've, I've said that a lot here lately, but it's amazing how much synthetic oil we go through now compared to even two or three years ago. Yep. And, yeah, but Pennzoil will be there today. We've got lots of oil. We've got filters. It fits everything. And, man, we really, we really strive own cars when you bring one in today and if it needed brakes and if it needed an alignment we're going to have that thing ready for you as quick as possible rarely do you have to leave one with us mm-hmm. that's not a very common occurrence we work very hard to make sure you get that thing back on the same day yep. so don't worry about having to do without a car on, on this stuff and people can drop them off with us and in most instances we give you a ride back to work yep. try to make it as painless as we can for you and if, if if that doesn't work, we've got a very nice waiting room with comfortable furniture, coffee, sodas, and a TV playing. So there you go. Yeah, come on in and see us. Come on in and see Mike and the gang. They're always anxious to help you out. Four two five thirty one thirty five Minute Mechanics located on Highway two hundred one North, across from Salvation Army, and plenty of time available this week to get the car in. Nice weather this week, and don't take any chances or wait till last minute. Thanksgiving's a month and a half away. 
what's yeah, getting close is getting ready to getting ready to start traveling. So, oh wow, there's a theme song. Give Mike and Gang a call today, 425-3135. Minute Mechanic once again on Highway 201 North across from Salvation Army. Time for the news. Be right back.